Hello, in this session we will look at your Terraform state file locking. Now in the last session we have looked at how you can make use of your S3 as your backend to store the state files. Uh, now locking is another feature that we have uh, which can be used to lock your state files whenever we are running an operation. Now why do we need locking? This can be useful whenever you want to avoid any overwrite, anyone overwriting your changes or uh, basically one creating the resource another deleting the resource so we can avoid that so or basically running multiple uh, operations at the same time so terraform state locking is for locking the state file during the deployment so when you're creating some resources or when anyone is using that state file you can basically lock it such that no two terraform processes are trying to update the same state file at the same time so basically you do not have two operations running at the same time on the same state file. So Terraform state locking will make sure that the state file is locked if it is presently in use by another user. So if someone else is running some operation, the Terraform state file will be locked out. Now if supported by your backend, Terraform will lock the state for all operations that could write the state. So if there are any write operations that we are doing, for example, Terraform apply, this will uh, make sure the locking will make sure that the state file is locked and it will not be able to run that operation. So this prevents others from acquiring the lock and potentially corrupting the state file. Now state locking happens automatically on all the operations that could write the state. So only if it's a write operation that's when the locking will happen. Now we won't generally see any message that the locking is happening. However, it is happening in the backend. Now, if the state locking fails for any reason, Terraform will uh, let the user know and it will not continue. Now, you also have the option of disabling the state locking for most of the commands by using this hyphen lock flag. However, it is not recommended to use this flag. Now, if acquiring the lock is taking longer than expected, Terraform will output a status message telling that you know it is taking longer uh, than expected to acquire the lock. Now, if Terraform does not output a message, state locking is still occurring if your backend supports it. Now, not all the backend supports your locking. Now, the uh, backend options that we have discussed in the previous sessions, most of the backends supports locking. So, Azure RM supports state locking and consistency checking with Azure Blob Storage native capabilities. Console supports your state lock locking. COS supports state locking. Uh, Google Cloud Storage supports state locking. HTTP optionally supports state locking. Kubernetes supports state locking with locking done using a lease resource. Uh, OSS supports state locking via table store. Uh, Postgres supports state locking. And then finally, S3 Bucket state supports state locking and consistency checking via DynamoDB database. All right. So how you how do you declare the locking block so when you we can declare the argument to enable locking within the same backend block of your configuration code so where you are defining your backend block within the same block you can define that you want to enable um, locking now how do you do that we can declare this argument dynamodb underscore table and then the name of your database the dynamodb table that you have created and this is what we'll be using to lock your state files now before you run the code make sure you have this uh, table the database created and add a partition with the name lock id so let's see an example for this so here i have the configuration uh, code that we are going to use for this example i'll provide the link to this in the description or in the resources section and here is my backend configuration so everything remains the same uh, as we saw in the last session but we just have this new argument which will tell Terraform that you need to use this for locking the state file. So let me quickly create this uh, table. So let's go to my DynamoDB. I'll create this table and give you a partition. So this will be your partition key, lock ID. So make sure you're using that. And then we will create this table. And now when we run the Terraform code, Terraform will use this table to uh, keep uh, a lock on the state file so let's just wait so this is ready and as of now if you look at the items this is empty i will not have any data in this all right now let's go back to the server 
Okay, so here I have the configuration files that we are going to use. So I have the uh, backend where I have given my uh, DB name, the database, the DynamoDB table name. And then I have the locals for the tags, uh, main where I'm creating two resources. So let me show. So two resources, the provider, the variable values and the variables. So let's quickly initialize this. We'll run the Terraform init command, so which will initialize the code for us. So we're using S3 as our uh, backend. Let's quickly generate a plan. So this will uh, show two resources will be added for us. So you can see plan two to add and let's apply this. So Terraform apply and let's auto approve this. And this will start creating two resources for us. And also uh, a lock will be generated in the DynamoDB. So here, if we, let's quickly go back to the table. And if we look at the table items, uh, let's wait, let's wait for the resources to be created. and done so my resources are added now let's go and check our uh, dynamodb table this is taking some time uh, let me quickly refresh this Okay, so here you can see this is the log ID. So that's the partition key that we had created and you can see uh, in this S3 bucket. So this is the S3 bucket we have given. This is the folder and inside that folder, this is the state file. And for this state file, it has created a log ID. All right, so now every time we run the operation. So let's say, for example, I want to replace an instance. So let's say I want to replace one of the instance. Let's apply this. So Terraform apply, auto approve this, and uh, I want to replace my instance dot server, and let's say we'll replace the first server. So what this will do is, uh, you we should be able to see an entry in the DynamoDB telling that an operation is running. So let me refresh this, and here you can see. So let me copy this and uh, sure you can see that's the id you can see the operation so operation to apply so we are doing an apply and then who is doing it you can see the server details and then the version when this was created and what is your state file so all this information will be available for us so now what has happened here is the state file is logged and if another user tries to uh, do a write operation this will fail okay so let me show you so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to open up one more session to the same uh, ec2 instance and let's say we'll try uh, uh, replacing the second instance so let me quickly go here and we'll say terraform apply auto approve this and then i want to replace my aws underscore instance dot server one which is my second instance now here okay this is already done so now the log has been released so let's do one thing uh, let's run this command so again a log will be uh, generated so here if i refresh this i should be able to see a new um, entry and let's try replacing this again on my other session and now you will see that this will fail okay so you can see error acquiring the state log so what this is telling is there is already an operation which is run okay and you can here you can see the details so that's the log id so you can see this is starting with 69 d9 
and here you can see 69D9. So basically this is telling me there's already an operation uh, apply which is running on and this is a user who has started this and once this lock is released only then I will be able to run this command. So this is basically what your state locking is and this can be useful when you want to avoid overwriting your state file or corrupting your state file and uh, um, especially if you're working with multiple developers we can make use of this locking feature which will lock the state file whenever we are doing a write operation so here this apply is basically a write operation we are uh, deleting an instance and adding a new instance which is basically a write operation so that's where we can make use of your locking the state file that's all for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you like the video leave a like and please share the video